If you're a fan of anime, you've got to check out Crunchyroll. It's the best place to get anime here in the United States, and John and Kim swear by it. All episodes are professionally subtitled, and you can watch it in 1080p, HD quality. And you can watch it in most devices, including Xbox, PlayStation, Wii U, Roku, Android, iOS, Apple TV, etc. Unlimited anime, manga, drama titles, and somehow they get the newest episodes as soon as one hour after it airs in Japan. I don't know how they do that, but that's pretty badass. So if you like anime, you're going to love this. The last part is even better. It's free for 30 days. Go to crunchyroll.com slash TYT. Start your free trial today. Josh Duggar, one of the Duggars from the show 19 Kids and Counting, has been revealed to be a child molester back when he was 14 years old. Now, these are uh, records from years and years ago, back in 2006. They were never revealed until now. Um, apparently, when the Duggars were supposed to appear on Oprah, a few years ago, uh, someone had written into them, it was an anonymous email indicating that Josh Duggar had done something shady in the past. And so uh, through a Freedom of Information Act request, uh, uh, members of the media were able to obtain these documents and they actually found out that there was some shady history uh, in the Duggars' past. Now, let me give you some information on that. According to a recently uncovered police report, Josh Duggar, one of the many stars of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, allegedly molested five girls. Five! Some of whom were reportedly his sisters, uh. starting in 2002. He was around 14 at the time. Per the report, Josh was accused of fondling the breasts and vaginas of his victims, mostly while the girls were sleeping, but sometimes when awake. Apparently, Josh's father, Jim Bob, was made aware of the incidents in March 2002, but he did not alert the police. In July 2002, Josh admitted to fondling a minor's breasts again, but his father still did not contact authorities. Apparently, he eventually went to some sort of rehabilitation program, Although, uh, Josh's mother is on record saying that that never happened, so there's a little confusion there. But Josh allegedly went to a Christian program from March 2003 to July 2003. The Duggars claim Josh apologized to his victims and that they had forgiven him and that several members of their church were aware of the situation and had been supportive of the family. I should also mm. note, he's married, he has children. Oh, does he have kids? He does oh, have kids. That's, that's does that make problem. you feel good? He has three children, another on the way, and his wife, Anna, apparently knew about what he had done in the past two years prior to getting married to him. And it's incredible to see the way that this story is covered versus any other story involving molestation. With this story, since he's a nice white Christian guy, oh, well, he found God and the molestation is totally fine, his victims forgave him, and we should all move on. Never mind the fact that his family never went to the authorities. They, they eventually went to a cop who was later found with child pornography, okay, and sentenced to they a to, They a went to the right cop. Yeah, they went to him. Um, but for a very long time, they brushed it under the rug. And now that this is a very public story, you have very high-profile individuals defending him and saying, oh, come on, he was just a young guy. He was curious. He's, he's learned better. Let's forgive him. He's found Jesus. So it's sure they didn't turn in their kid to the cops, but they said that he went to counseling. Mm -hmm. And then later admitted that he didn't go to counseling. What he actually did was that uh, he was sent to a family friend who was in the home remodeling business. Yep. So apparently uh, they were trying to drywall away some of his perversion, <laughs> yeah. which could work. Uh, they also, then they took him to, as you mentioned, to the home of an Arkansas state trooper named Jim Hutchins. Uh, he gave him a very stern talking to, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe he gave him some tips on how to do this without getting caught because that same state trooper is now serving 56 years in prison for child pornography, as you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, again, I know I can't really talk about this because I grew up Catholic and my parents were really Catholic. Like they almost molested somebody. And, uh, but I don't go, I still go to church, but I'm molest. I'm a lazy Catholic. I don't detest mm -hmm. or have a problem with re all religious people. I only have problems with religious people who aren't really living up to the spirit of their religion that they profess. The people that they either use religion for two reasons. One is a club to beat you with. 
uh, they use the Bible as a club to be, or two, they use it to hide behind their horrible behavior by saying, look, I, I, I made good with God. And that's what they're doing here yeah. is they keep saying, hey, look, we, we struggled. This has brought us closer to God. That's what they say. This has brought our family closer to God. And we want to th praise God for, and, and for him bringing us through these difficult times. And I'm like, well, where the fuck was God when that guy was sticking his fingers up those little girls when they were sleeping? Where was God then? Maybe if he's really that good of a God, he could intervene a little earlier in the process instead of only now he's intervening to shield you from legitimate criticism. What do these people have in common? Ted Cruz, Scott Walker, Jeb Bush, Mike Huckabee, Rand Paul, Reince Priebus, Joni Ernst, Bobby Jindal, David Limbaugh, Rick Perry, Rick Santorum, Sarah Palin. They're all douchebags? <laughs> Something else. Uh, they've all had their photos taken with with the, what's his name? Oh, with the with, child molester, with, with Duggar? Li with little Duggar, with little, is it Josh? Josh Duggar, with he's Josh actually Duggar. The, old, the eldest. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Uh, he's got, like, he's got, uh, he's got his picture taken with all those people and then, you know, puts it up on Twitter and, like, you know, always great to hang out with Bristol Palin and Sarah Palin, two great Americans. Ryan's Priebus yeah. is fighting for our rights. Yeah, uh, so he has resigned as uh, the executive director of the Family Research Council. That's one of the reasons why he's been, you know, rubbing shoulders with all these politicians. He was an executive with that terrible, terrible organization. What, what, he has now stepped down because of these recent revelations. But, you know, I, I remember when I used to see photos like that before, I was like, why are these politicians so obsessed with this reality guy? Like, he's on a reality show. What's the big deal? But no. This is a guy who had a very high position in an organization that shuns members of the LGBT community because they're worried about them somehow harming society. You know what harms society? Molesting girls while they're asleep or molesting people, period. Okay, that, that's a little more harmful. And it, it's incredible to me how they demonize entire groups of people when behind the scenes they're doing this kind of stuff. And look. It happened when he was 14. It happened over a decade ago. I'm not excusing him. Don't get me wrong, right? Um, I'm sure it's an uncomfortable thing for his family to have to deal with. But understand that when you are a public figure and you get this kind of spotlight on a regular basis and you use that spotlight to demonize people, you got to take a quick look at what's going on within. Because that's, if you have a history of molesting people, you have no fucking room to talk. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I'm like, if his victims have forgiven him and he was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, a kid with, uh, I'm now going to give his best case scenario, although he would never give this, a kid with two of the worst parents in the history of the world, right? Pretty bad. Pretty bad parents, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, parents eager to teach you how you're better and other people were, got problems and uh, the fa fa parents eager to ostracize others who are other, who are different. Um, but he was 14. He was a kid. If this has stopped, you know, so, uh, so he, 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 he was a kid. It, it, that matters to me. It okay. uh, unquestionably ma ma it makes a difference okay. to me. But still then, how you would not have exactly what Anna was talking about. You don't have that moment of realization that, wow, man, people go through hard times. Yeah. I went through a hard time and unless I'd had a family around me or unless I'd had people at some point who got around to pointing me in the right direction if once Jim Bob did something about it right he's got to pick one name. I could be in I, I, could, I could have been in I, I sh could be in prison right now I could be spending my life behind bars being treated as we're given to understand as poorly as any prisoner can be treated that yeah. type of offender in prison and it gets to a point that like I was criticized we did, I did a there was a piece I saw yesterday on the CBS Morning Show, which was on randomly because I turned the TV on for the dogs and I'd been watching Letterman the night before. <laughs> I was the only, but I got to see a piece, and I know, Jimmy, this, this speaks to you, but I got to see a piece about a radio station in Colorado that was now all weed all the time, oh, and they were great. doing pretty well. They play a lot of my stuff. And they had, <laughs> they, had, they had switched to that format because the program, despite the fact that the program director or the owner of the station was a self-described serious conservative Republican. And he, in the interview, he goes, hey, two years ago, if you'd asked me if I'd been supportive of weed legalization, I'd have said, absolutely no way, scourge of society, drugs, kids, whatever. Well, then his kid got sick and his kid needed chemotherapy. Oh. And the kid was violently ill with right. the chemo. And what do you know? What do you know? The synthetic weed stopped it, he said, within 12 hours. Yeah. Oh, his what kid do you instantly know? Felt great story, wonderful. Oh, thank God the kid got it. So now this guy's a convert. 
classic Republican can't understand a problem until it personally that's affects what, him. That's right. what I do understand. And, and Josh Duggar doesn't even get it once it does yes. happen to him. Like, I mean, it's bad enough like that. Who is the who is the representative? Uh, Rob Portman. I yes. couldn't think of him yes. yesterday. Rob Portman, who was like, and it's great that when your kid turns out to be gay that you think, Maybe we should stop demonizing gays, yeah. right? Maybe I shouldn't be against gay marriage. But to me, like, did it not occur to you for a one second that there might be somebody else who's gay? Did it not occur to you that somewhere there is some family that's benefiting from medical marijuana because their kid is sick? Or the hundred dozen reasons why it might be valuable? No, only when it happens to you. But Josh Duggar, it doesn't even happen to him when it happens to him. That's how completely separated from reality is. I'm willing to forgive him. He was a kid. Mm -hmm. And it's terrible, and now his foibles as a child are out there in the world for him to be mortified by. And I honestly hope that us talking about it and the way the rest of the world is talking about it, I hope he gets through it. I do, because I don't want anybody to have to suffer through this. But the And, and his victims, which are now being, mostly his victims who are now being reminded of it. But to not, to still preach this kind of vitriolic hate and not understand that you are the luckiest son of a bitch in the world is galling and disappointing.